What's up, Reapers? Welcome to Alex for Corals. This is Alex Wilson, your host, and I got more of the good, the bad, and the ugly here. That's right, this is my video log series, a daily video where you can get all of your daily reefing details, the good and the bad, and hopefully learn from my mistakes. So, here we go today. I, I, Overdose my alpha reef, so let's check it out. Alright, so here's the alpha reef right here. And I really love the stuff, it's great, and I really love adding it to this way using this manual adding a container, usually great, but not foolproof. And the fool is me because here I was, um, I usually, uh, you remove this, the right cap right there, and then you, uh, you know, you, you squeeze it in, and it goes up to the level you want it, and then you just dump it in there, right? Right, but I had removed the other cap, the other cap to the left there, and, you know, because I, I, I added a little bit more in there, and, you know, I shouldn't mess with it all because it was okay, and then when I went in there, I, I moved, I was kind of in a hurry, so that was where I messed up, and, and I grabbed this, I put it into my 20 gallon quarantine, it should have been my 5 milliliters. And, you know, so I, I, I turned it over and dumped it, yeah, dumped it in the right hand side, that's 5 milliliters, but the other side opened up straight and added, I don't know how much, all for if I overdosed in there, it could be anywhere from 10, 20 to 100% overdose on the all for if there, so... I, um, so let's check it out and see if everything is still alive or if everything is burned out from the Alpha Reef overdose. Here it is. It's just the poor little 20 gallon aquarium, right? Uh, quarantine aquarium that I have right here. And fingers crossed, but everything is, is still alive so far. You know, I did an emergency, uh, 50% water change just a couple minutes after overdosing the aquarium and it's now been uh, the second day here so just getting ready to test my alkalinity see where that's at it could be sky high in which case I'll have to do another major water change and so when I did the water change I just really quickly did it so I left everything where it was at right here this uh, Let's a look at my uh, Christmas tree worm rocks right there. And so I dropped the water down and exposed these guys to air for just a few minutes. I thought it might kill them. Luckily it didn't. I mean, when they closed up, they, sure, they squirted out water everywhere. So they were squirting water right and left. And, and then I also noticed that, I can't even see it, but let's see if I can get a... Might be able to get a close up, but there is one little guy right here, and that right there is a hermit crab. I didn't know, but he was in there too. He has his little burrow in there, and he sticks his little arms out. A little hermit crab in there, as well as one of these hosts with the parietes corals. As well to the right, right, you probably can't see them, but there are a couple of um, of those bristle, brittle starfish. So I got a couple of brittle stars in here as well. And luckily the low water level didn't kill either one of them. And well, the brittle, brittle star probably could have crawled down a little bit in there. So it's cool. As well as this uh, dragon's hole left it there. And it probably went down halfway down where it was at. And yeah, it was a little, a little mad for about a day or so. and But it recovered just fine. As same thing with the... Uh, um, die fast year back there and so uh let's see what else yeah that's it everything else is uh looking okay i mean thankfully the brown slime storm is over that's right it's officially over it looks like thanks to the chemi clean so now it's been like this is probably like day six or seven of the chemi clean treatment and I can see that it's starting to dissipate here down under the sand right here where I have it. But it's still there so far. However, it's completely gone from on top of the coral right here. The only place where I could still see it is right here on my 
intake and of, I just cleaned it off. But you can see that where I lowered down for the water change right there, it killed all of the coralline algae. So it was only, you know, just a couple minutes, maybe just like tops 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes, all the coralline algae is completely gone. By the way, I mean, that's what we, I would prefer to just get, instead of live rock, I just want coralline rock, coralline covered rock, just give me that. And so, you know, obviously it's gotta be contained under water the whole time because it just dies so quickly once it's exposed to the air. But everything else is doing good, except we got the fuzzy mushrooms still closed up. They have to balance back, but they're definitely still closed up. In contrast, the finger, my soft horse right here, finger leather to the left, and my toadstool to the right right here. Just, just they, they have been growing. I've just seen them actually grow in spite of all the brown slime on them. The finger leather is sprouted up like another inch at least, and the toe soul's definitely gotten bigger. Even you know, this is definitely not the weeping willow toe soul that I was thought I was buying um, off a seller on eBay. But he might have thought he had weeping willow stuff. I got the uh, awesome green weeping willow off of Unique Corals, and then I killed it, and that's it. It's gone. I cannot find any more of it. I thought this was it. It's not, and uh, so Unique Corals, I, I haven't seen any more, they just happened to get this one thing in it, you know, it's just imported, probably, and so looking for more of that, you know, that's definitely different than just the straight brown, um, you know, because this green uh, weeping willow toadstool, it had like about a good, uh, you know, uh, three or four four inch, but like a four inch polyp extension, you know, whereas just the, the true brown weeping willow has a good like six or seven inches worth of polyp extension. And one thing I could definitely say, certainly about the brown weeping willow, but certainly about this green one that I had, definitely takes up a huge amount of space because it's just like a real, it seems like it's a real small little top of the base right there. Then you have the polyps just sticking out absolutely everywhere. So it takes up like, I had a little piece in it like that right here. And it, it like took up a fourth of this little aquarium right here. So probably a good, you know, uh, this is two feet. So, you know, it seemed like it was like six inches with three on each side. It was just, you know, just sprout like all the way around. So you really had need a lot of space. Otherwise it just starts um, touching and stung by all the corals around it. So that's, that and okay so we're taking a shot of close up and looks all of the brown slime is completely gone let's check out the crosaic clam here it was all over the shell now it's just white bubbles now it's gone completely gone and let's check out it was all on this crushed coral right here all gone and check out the acropores and yeah you know this one yellow bennett's right there doesn't have the polyp extension that it had. Look for the, hopefully it'll recover. We've got this uh, Walt Disney right here, and it is looking pretty good. Pretty good polyp extension on that one, and then the home wrecker right here. Let's see if I can get an even closer view of the home wrecker, and there he is. Yeah, so looking pretty nice, amazing. Considering I just pulled up. I don't know how many acros, man. They were like dying right and left. I probably pulled out like six or seven acropores have dying on me at least. And look at the rainbow splices right here. Still alive. Can't believe it. Got my fingers crossed. And I don't even want to think about if these things died right here. But this one is definitely looking okay. There's the other one out there. The red and green rainbow splice. Still alive. Princess Peach and the Milliporus over here is still alive. Orange Titosa. I can't even remember which one this is right here. Some kind of red stag. Jason Fox. Fox Flame. And the one back is the Super Green Millie. As, and then the, the Rainbow Loom right there. The green one in the back. The straight. Rainbow Acropora looking nice as well as the other uh, 
that's the firecracker table by Abe Corleforia still alive can't believe it fingers crossed and as well as these other guys have lost some colors but they're still there and that's the green Bali slimer right there sticking up a little bit it's kind of high behind this rock right here to get to focus correctly there it is so Definitely lost a lot of color around. It's supposed to be green, but it's not green anymore. It just has a couple of the polyps or just a, a hint of green on. Here's a close-up of that one. So, same thing with this one right here. This one is the Marvelous Marvin. It's all closed up, and it has really long polyps on it. So, other than that, you know, oh, this is the Super Red Stag right there. A Radical Red Stag. Jason Fox, huge nice piece of it down there, still alive. And hopefully it's gonna get better pop extension. And I got this up. That's the Frankie's table, still alive as well. So, oh yeah, and then I got the, I moved the, that's the pink lemonade. Moved it right there, so it should be okay there. Here's the newest clam. Edition from Biota, looking nice. And the other one, the other one did die. But we'll get some more. But it's too hot over here now. It's already well into the hundreds, so I think it's too hot to risk getting more coral at this time. Well, certainly Alcopora, certainly uh, Crossea clams. Better off getting them when the weather's halfway decent. And so, yep, that's it for now. I'm going to try to, uh, you know, see if I can uh, get this, um, well, I'll just wait another two and a, oh, I guess it's probably like two months or so since I added the, uh, well, it's been about a week since I added the clam, so it's going to be about two months before I'll be ready to transfer this stuff over to the main display. Got the Stylo 4 right there, looking as good as ever. As well as the Blastomusa in the back. It's got a polyp extension back, so it's looking like that's recovering nicely as well. So, that's that, and let's see, what am I missing? Well, I guess that's it. Let's just check out what I got over here. Here's the Project X Style of Horror, Jason Fox, and it's still a live, decent polyp extension on it, but it Definitely did not like that brown slime on it whatsoever, and the brown slime burned up the, the tips of the bird nest, burned up all kinds of stuff. Hide no for it right here, Jason Fox. Hide no for it. Definitely getting some pulp extension on them, finally opening up a little bit. So, good news there. This is the green micro musa. Got that one from Live Aquaria. Turban areas back open. And the disco somas are back to their former glory. So check out that burst nest really quick though. Here it is in the back over there and it's uh it definitely has the three burned up tips on it. So yep, there they are. That brown slime just burns it up really well. So All right, let's check out the main display really quick. What do we got over here? See, yellow things hanging out over here. Everything else looking okay. Right, dude? Get close up for the yellow tang. Let's do it, come on. All right, you want to, this is it. Center tent, yellow tang time, go. Yeah, he, what? he speaks Mandarin now because he's been hanging out over here with the Mandarin. So he's getting pretty good at speaking Mandarin. And uh, so why don't you go over there and tell the Mandarins to come over here so we can film them. All right? All right, there's one right there. There's the Mandarin now, all right, thing. Tell him to come out here. Ah, he's gone. But we're maybe one's here, so the other one's usually by here as well. Nope, all right, well, anyway. Baby Mandarin's there from Biota, looking pretty good. And the other thing. So, 
Everything's doing pretty good in here. Check out the green slime after a horror. Yep, still doing good, good pulp attention on them. So, definitely want to keep the brown slime, red slime, cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates <laughs> under control if possible. On the other hand, you don't have any choice but just uh, just to burn them up. Let it run its course and, and have it burn itself out. Depending. It just kind of depends. But yeah, that's a quick look at everybody today. Alright guys, well, I guess that's it for this update. And I'll check you on the next one. But happy reefing and check back to see what has lived. What will live, what will die. And learn from my mistakes. Alright, happy reefing. Bye.